Hello, beautiful souls. I hope you're well. Today, I have the immense joy and opportunity to offer to you, um, in all gratitude to uh, my friend Paul, um, uh, his own take of things and how he, uh, what is his perception of uh, the main theme of this sort of triptych we created through these three videos um, about the fact of um, going within ourselves to uh, receive information or guidance and how to trust it. We had the opportunity and joy to receive in a previous video, my friend uh, Quentin Nagios and also um, Desiree Sanchez in the second video and in this third video uh, I unfortunately cannot bring you uh, my friend Paul uh, here with you because for um, reasons of an anonymity I will which I will discuss in a few uh, couple of minutes. Uh, he's not able to be with us, but uh, we had a Zoom uh, exchange and interview together. And I had the opportunity to take uh, very thorough notes about what everything uh, Paul and his guide wish to um, offer us in all humility and, and kindness uh, to, you know, perhaps uh, help us in, in that journey of exploring uh, the, the, the journey of going within and finding our answers and, you know, and things like that. So uh, today will be the third and last video on that particular topic, but there is a possibility that we might be having um, uh, a return of uh, perhaps um, of Quentin and uh, perhaps Desiree or Paul or whoever wants to come back on the channel to speak about things that uh, they consider important. So um, before I uh, go into more depth into material that my friend Paul wants to share with us, I just want to discuss briefly uh, that in this first part of this video, we're really going to address Paul's uh, journey and his own way of, uh, you know, going within, receiving information uh, and how to trust, you know, how he decided to trust it and how how he went through that particular process, which was not always easy and could sometimes be a, li a, little, bit, a little bit uh, frightening. And uh, but then after that was, you know, reassured into the process and is now able to accomplish his what he came on earth to do here on Terra. And uh, in the second part of the video, I would like to present a little bit more um, different elements and um, tips and guidance that Paul and his guide wish to offer to us who, are, you know, we are all journeying in that spiritual path and in that inner path. And so he has a lot of uh, tips and things he would like to offer so generously. So I will discuss that in the second part of this video. So before I start that part, uh, I would like to present a little bit, uh, you know, who Paul is. Um, there's, um, there's a couple of reasons for Paul's anonymity. Um, the reason is that uh, for professional reasons, because Paul is uh, still holds a, um, a corporate job and he has people working for him and things like that. So it, it would be difficult for him in the state of the world in which we are still right now where you know, um, people get judged and, you know, taken out of their jobs for saying, you know, what we say. So um, Paul has a financial responsibilities towards, um, you know, his personal life, so he cannot lose his job. And he has a purpose in his job as well, which I will talk in a minute about. And so that's one of the reasons why he prefers to re remain anonymous. Um, another reason why Paul decided to remain anonymous is to, because his guide um, feels that, um, well, Paul's mission, if you want, and we don't, we're not usually big fan of that word mission because it gives it this really pompous thing, but his Paul's wor um, role in 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 his incarnation on this on this terra, uh, in this life is about uh, offering um, some guidance and sometimes even some some form of activation, if we want, just through talking, through exchanges uh, with people around him, uh, maybe close friends or family, but also in his work environment uh, without necessarily always talking about things like that, because for reasons we mentioned earlier, he's not always able to do so unless people are opening up to this, which you know is starting to happen in this work environment. Just by being who he is, by his energies, by... 
um, you know, by radiating who he is and how he acts and kindness and benevolence and generosity, um, he he also brings something to these people and that's his way of doing it. And I think that's a beautiful lesson in humility for all of us who think that we have to accomplish really amazing things and, and be really known out there or whatever. That's not necessarily the case. Uh, you know, we can be participate in a disclosure uh, community. We can participate in changing this world just by being who we are and incarnate our, our, our beautiful life vibrations and this is something uh, Paul is doing in his work environment and you know with people around him um the also the other reason why uh, Paul wishes to remain anonymous is the fact that uh him and his guide really want to um, people to focus on the message or on the guidance rather than on you know, on the one who offers it. So again, out of humility, it's not his purpose to become a known person or to be, you know, uh, recognized in the street and word, you know, worshipped at all these um, pathetic things. Um, he really wishes to just offer something uh, in humility. And, and if people connect and resonate with what he has to bring, then wonderful. And that's the whole purpose of it. Another reason as well uh, is also the question of um, he doesn't encourage people who are doing things for a lot of money. Uh, for example, my my channel is unmonetized and I have no intention whatsoever to monetize ever my channel. We're still very small. I have less than 600 uh, subscribers, so I'm not even eligible to monetizing right now. But if I was, I, I would not do so because I believe it's important to keep everything as free as possible or and, you know, accessible to everyone. And that's also Paul's philosophy. So, you know, we uh, he he wishes to do things uh, that are not um, contributing to other people becoming really rich on other people's back. You know, so that's, you know. A lot of the reasons of his animosity, uh, and in uh, not animosity, I'm sorry, anonymity. Um, Paul is a great friend. Paul is a uh, a brother, a little bit like Quentin is, and Desiree, and we met uh, three years ago. Uh, since uh, we were all following uh, Elena's, um, uh, you know, transmissions and and her channel, uh, in the. Um, and what she had to bring from upstairs. And since then, we've been a good, you know, part of a, a sort of a, a, a small, close-knitted family with Quentin, with Desiree, and uh, with other members of our little group and uh, friends with Lena as well. And this is something that, um, you know, brought us together, but always, um, you know, makes us uh, really close friends and we help and support each other. Um, Paul is a beautiful soul. He's extremely generous. He's sensible. He's He's kind. He's uh, he's about my age, just to give you an idea. Because since you're not going to see a picture of him, just to give you an idea of you know, who you know, um, the context of who he is. Uh, Paul lives in Mexico with his partner, and uh, they have now three dogs, uh, th three. 13 dogs. Uh, they used to have 15 dogs, which unfortunately two of them passed on lately. And it was very difficult for both of them because they're very attached to their um, dog companions. And these beautiful beings are, you know, being taken care of with lots of love and generosity and care uh, by Paul and his partner. So it's a, uh, that already gives you an idea of who Paul is, you know, um, so this is just to give you a little bit of context of, you know, where he is. Um, Paul's um, desire or wish is to be able to create a healing center in the future when, you know, he can finally stop having a corporate job, which he doesn't necessarily enjoy so much, but he knows the purpose of it. And uh, so his, his, him and his partner wish to um, actually pursue, uh, purchase a, a large piece of land in order to create a healing center where people could come for retreats and connect with their higher self, with their inner self, to meditate, to heal. And also his dream would have to be able, would be to actually have a med bed that he could use for um, helping humans as well as animals to heal uh, on a free basis. He would wish for this to be free again, something very important to him. Uh, another uh, one of his dreams is to plant more than 400 trees on their land. And they have already uh, started, uh, you know, growing little little trees in their backyard. So that's something they're really, you know, starting to to create in their lives is to really start to manifest their dream already from now on. 
And uh, what they wish uh, also is to build a transitional uh, animal shelter, a place because um, some of you perhaps know that in Mexico, there is a lot of stray animals, maybe dogs and cats who are either abandoned or, you know, hurt or just stray. And uh, the purpose would be to actually um, welcome these animals in this transitional shelter. And the purpose would be to uh, help them being getting adopted uh, all around the world. So that's, you know, that's what they want to do in life. And I think it's a, an absolutely amazing and beautiful um, mission or, uh, you know, yeah, mission. Let's call it a mission. Let's assume ourselves in that way uh, for the world and uh, and for the animals and uh, and plants and the earth. So that's really beautiful. Uh, since Paul was a teenager, he's always been extremely fascinated by the Celtic music and Celtic culture in general. Uh, he also discovered a little bit later the Druidic traditions, which is something he really, really um, enjoys very much and obviously shares an interest he shares a lot with uh, his good friend Elena Danan, who we talked about earlier, who's a, who's a remain friend, Tim. And um and he wanted to share um, because he said this is something that people don't always know about, especially in the modern uh, Druidic traditions, is that uh, there's an element there that he found important to uh, specify is that uh, in originally the Druidic traditions um, uh, held the, the belief in reincarnation. And that is something we don't always know. And I think this was also the case, for example, in Christianity, where at a certain point it was decided to take away from the sacred scriptures the notion of reincarnation, but it was there at the beginning. And so that's, you know, things that have been meddled with and um, information that has been uh, changed with time for reasons we'll not get, in, get into. Uh, but this is a, a something he wanted to um, give a precision about because uh, that's something that's necessar not necessarily talked about in Celtic traditions or, or Druidic traditions. So that's a little point he wanted to add there. So being really interested by this Celtic music culture and Druidic traditions, uh, Paul joined in around 2016. He joined some Celtic uh, groups on uh, Facebook, on Facebook groups that were interested in these particular topics and subjects. Groups which he's not necessarily a part of anymore. Now he just keeps a couple of friends in, in that, you know, in that uh, in that domain, but he he's not necessarily following all these groups anymore. But um synchronistically, it is through one of these groups that in February 2020, um he received, you know, he was pointed towards uh, Elena's work through a friend who was one of the in these groups. And uh, since then, Elena, uh, you know, uh, was a good friend to him and, and remained that way. And it's, so it's, it's in the end of March 2020, before the actual rollout of the pandemics, uh, before the lockdown uh, that took place in Mexico, as everywhere in the world, that um, actually Paul got his first experience uh, regarding uh, receiving guidance or information from his guide. And that happened uh, very surprisingly to him uh, while he was uh, driving home on a Thursday evening back from work. And he heard a very distinct um, voice in his head. And we can really talk about clear audience here. We're not just talking about telepathy. We're talking about clear audience. And that voice um, uh, said, you know, hi, how are you? And Paul asked, you know, who is that? You know, and. And the voice said, I'm your guide, just calm down. I'm I'm someone who has been uh, here for you a long time, watching over you and helping and protecting you mainly. And so, you know, Paul was extremely surprised. And at first he admits he was kind of freaked out. And he uh, he was thinking to himself, am I going crazy? You know, am I losing my mind? And, you know, Paul is a very down-to-earth, uh, very reasonable person. He's not like a woo-woo type of you know, new age uh, type of person. He he was always always interested in meditation and and things like that. But that doesn't mean he's you know out there and crazy. And uh, when he went to back home, he said to his partner, you know, I, I heard a voice. Am I becoming crazy? You know, he was he was worried. So, but later on, he decided to calm down and see what happened. Would happen. So he started to focus and just to be more in you know and and be in meditation. 
and um and through these meditation his this voice who, who actually happened to be his guide uh started to encourage him to do more breathing to do more focusing and meditation he encouraged him to meditate more and more and also he uh, encouraged um Paul to perhaps um follow uh, Elena's guided meditations which are on uh, Elena's uh, YouTube channel which are in the earliest part of Elena's material uh, Elena Denan's material and uh, these meditations I've done them as well they're they're wonderful they're they're, they're great but since <clears throat> Paul had really resonated with Elena since the beginning they had met uh, I think that and it was not a coincidence since actually his guide told him that he is the one who synchronistically brought um, attention, uh, brought Paul's attention to Elena's work and made it discovering through, you know, a, a person of a group. So again, synchronistically worked, uh, synchronicity worked for him uh, in that way. And that's why he connected with Elena. And this is how um, Paul realized with time how Elena's guided meditations was the right way for him. And, you know, it's not for everyone, but it was the right way for him to connect a little bit more to his inner self, to his higher self, to focus and, you know, uh, and to be more concentrated on his breathing, on his grounding and, you know, just be connected in that way um, uh, to, to himself and to his guidance he was receiving through that voice, which happened to be his guidance. Um so, you know, through their conversations, uh, um, Paul was able to ask, you know, to his guidance, like, who are you? Where do you come from? Uh, you know, why did you not come? Why did you did not come to me before or earlier when I was, you know, sometimes feeling alone or wondering why, you know, I could, I could not hear anything or be in guidance. And his guide answered to him that he tried to contact him before, but, um, you know, he, he had to be more focused and perhaps it was not the time. So when uh, he was uh, connected to Elena's work, it was a time when, in a way, he became sort of activated uh, and was able to finally, um, yeah, get in contact with his with his guide. Uh, furthermore, uh, as a star seed, Paul uh, started to also have intuitions and actually clear images about who he is upstairs, as we say, <laughs> we use that expression talking about, um, you know, uh, star family, and also about his world and uh, the people, um, you know, who is part of his people upstairs, you know, and so that was really interesting. And that is something that um, he decided he would not share with you in terms of details. And the reason for that is not to be secretive in any way. It's just because he doesn't see the point in people hearing that and just, you know, going through trying to find, you know, what that race, that star nation is. And he wants us to focus on the story and mostly on the messages that guide has to bring to us and not on the particular details about where he comes from and who are his people and what, you know, race he is from or whatever. So he decided not to share that with us today, but, you know, it's one of the races that uh, is actually in uh, Elena's book, uh, which is um, the Elena, Elena Denan's first book, A Gift from the Stars. He's part of one of the 110 races that are, uh, discussed in Elena's book which which is interesting though is that um when um uh, when Paul first received first received these uh this information um he was I, I I feel he was still at the beginning of his sort of journey and he felt a little bit of a need to get some answers or, or for confirmation just to make sure that he was not being you know perhaps I don't know um receiving information from some you know some um, negative entity or whatever. So since he was friends with Elena, and at the time Elena was still doing some rune readings uh, um, for people, which she doesn't do anymore because obviously she's so caught up with so much things to do and she's not something she can offer anymore. But at the time, at the beginning, she was not very known. And, you know, he had the opportunity to have a session with her and talk. And 
actually, you know, she did confirm that this this person was uh, his guide and uh, was, um, you know, to be relied on. It was it was, it was a good a good entity, full of light, which you know Paul already knew within himself. But it was nice to have a confirmation. And like I said, um, two months later, uh, you know, Elena was publishing her uh, book, the, A Gift from the Stars, in which uh, one of the the, the when this spe- this species appeared. So what I'm trying to say with that uh, say with that is that Paul already knew about these species before the actual book came out. So it's not like he read the book and suddenly he wanted to be one of them. You know what I mean? This is really important to precise because, uh, you know, there's there's been problems about that, you know, lately, mostly in the disclosure about com- community, about people who suddenly claim to be things that they've just heard of 10 minutes ago in El- one of Elena's videos or tra- transmissions. So, you know, that's something that Paul had discovered for himself two months before Elena's confirmation. So, you know, he wanted me to pres- give that precision because it's kind of important. Um Yeah. So, like I said, I'm he. He wished not to give the precisions about his world, his people, because he doesn't see the point in it. it it's really specific to himself and to his journey. And but they're obviously <laughs> high vibration beings. They're not, you know, they're benevolent, benevolent ones. Uh, so after that uh, session and confirmation, Paul felt really. Uh, let's say, confident to continue actively to do his meditation, to focus, to do some grounding, which was highly recommended by his guide, by his guidance. Um, And he also had some really special and very profound experiences uh, regarding these um, these guidances he was receiving from from his guide and for example in one in one uh in one experience he was um pulled out of his body and had the opportunity to um to be lifted up and brought to a very very beautiful high vibration place and you know paul was crying it was a little bit like you know i don't want to compare the two experiences but i remember quentin saying in the first video where he had also an experience where he felt really um filled with light and with a, with a powerful experience and i think paul felt something that was similar in the sense that he was filled with love and felt with a, a profound you know uh sense of gratitude and love for, for that guidance for that being so that was a beautiful experience and he was brought to a place where they were actually floating in a sort of cavern with uh which had like an open skylight and you know they could see the stars above and it was just a really amazing amazing experience for him and as he pre- gives precision paul said that the reason why his guide uh offered him uh, this beautiful moment this complicity was in order for him to um offer him some calmness and to remind him that everything is going was going to be okay because at the time uh, the pandemics was taking place and uh, you know the deep state was really really playing hard on fear and sequestering people inside their homes and uh, you know menacing people to get the you know the jab and you know everything that we know about and you know menacing people to lose their job if they would not comply to receiving the jobs and the masks masks and everything and obviously Paul was very scared because obviously he would not do any of these things and uh, he was wondering if he was to lose his job and it was very scary for him because he needed to support you know um not only the the 15 dogs at the time and but also to just you know to continue his mission and what he was doing in his work job but in his uh, work um environment and also to just make sure that you know he could just satisfy his basic needs uh which was something we all went through all of us who got not did not get the the jab and were not ready to wear masks and you know have vaccination passports we were all in the same situation where you know i had personally to to um refuse to two jobs because you know some things were mandatory and you know so i know exactly what paul went through and that was very difficult and was very anxious uh, and uh, bringing us a lot of anxiety you know so it was a beautiful thing that um uh his guide was able to reassuring him in that way and he kept telling him Paul, you know, do not worry. Everything's going to be all right. You're being taken care of. You're not going to have to do, be obligated to do these things if you don't want to. And he stuck to this and he was able to continue having his job. So the, you know, the, 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 the good thing about this story is that again, if we are in trust, if we are in, 
in 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 confidence in ourselves and our guidance then you know things happen well you know so we have to always remember that and that's something that uh, paul's experience and journey really shares with us here and i think it's an, an important point so you know uh through time for the last three years then paul has been continuing with extreme um you know perseverance and 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 in uh, discipline in a way um he continued to do his grounding his meditation and he still does and um the way in which uh, with time he has developed uh, his guidance um you know contacts the way he receives his, his his guidance is yes through this form of clear audience that he always had since it started um and but also so through a form of telepathy sometimes through the use of images sometimes through the use of dreams and a lot through music because paul is very very sensible to music music of any kind especially celtic music but you know through any music he also loves french music because he loves french culture and that's something else but you know he's he responds very well to music so that's his own way of receiving guidance so the reason why we 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 share this is because again to remind you that there's different ways in which we can communicate and receive information you know it's not a one way thing everybody's different everyone has his own journey his own um way and we have to be remind ourselves that there's many ways in which we can receive our guidance um so the ways in which he and that's his own experience it doesn't say that everybody has to do it but the way he uh is able to receive more of his guidance and be more in focus is through deep meditations um especially like i said the ones that uh were offered freely by elena on her youtube channel that's something you really resonated with that's his thing you know it's perfect not everybody has to do it if you don't resonate with that uh he also what also helps him a lot is grounding on our planet on terra through actually putting your feet on the ground either on the earth or just you know on the ground simply and just visualizing some roots coming out of your feet and going into the planet also be in contact with crystals is something that really helps Paul to focus more but again it doesn't have to be everybody's journey that really helps him but you know and also that uh, through dreams he's able to receive a lot of information but also it's a way for him to to get in contact with uh, his um, his guidance and through um, the information he's supposed to own not only receive himself but eventually to help others. So this is a little bit the story of um, of Paul's journey. So I think it really well exemplifies the three points that we uh, choose to 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 talk about in in this triptych, which is about you know going within um, and and receiving information, how to trust it. I would say it touches upon more about this the second and third topic, which is about receiving information and also about um, trusting your information but in this second part of the video um paul and his guidance also wish to share important tips and important information um and guidance in all humility and you know you take it if it resonates if you don't resonate it's perfect there's no problem you move on uh, but i think that the elements that he brings or they bring here in through this second part of the video really gives emphasis in on the first point of this whole discussion we have which is about receiving information uh, which is about going within i'm sorry it's about going within and how we do that and why we do it why is it so important and um you know paul's guidance really 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 uh, emphasizes the importance of going within and this is what we're going to discuss now uh and offer um you know a little bit of uh, paul's guidance uh in this video so uh one of the important things that uh, paul and his guide uh, wanted to um, share about is the importance of focusing on your mission on terra and not so much about your life upstairs uh this especially applies to people who are star seeds and who you know have made sort of a journey to try to discover who they are who their star nations are where they come from what their world is it is a, a beautiful journey it's a beautiful important journey to take and that is not denied in any way. However, um, what Paul and his guide really recommend or invite us to do is at some point is to let go of this absolute need to know 
who we are and where we come from upstairs. Uh, if we do know good, if we don't, that's okay too. And if we are not able to know that, perhaps it's because we're not supposed to, because we are sovereign beings and we are not victims. And we have decided, you know, we have uh, agreed on the things that happens in our lives. We're no victims. So if for some reason we're not re recovering memories about who we are upstairs, and as much as we try and we focus and we meditate, perhaps it's because we're not meant to. And the reason for that is because sometimes there's a risk that we might end up being homesick and remaining ungrounded, just floating in the stars and always wanting to go back there all the time without really uh, focusing on what's really the important thing here is about the mission we chose. Or again, we don't really love that word mission, but the... The contract we signed with ourselves in order to come here and do something to help people or to help the world or animals or humans or whatever. So um, we are here um, to learn who we are as fractals of source, but as you know, unique beings. Uh, we're here to know why we're here. You know, what is it we want to do here? What what's our purpose here? And you know, if if we are here to help how and who are we here to help you know so they really wanted to to us for us to focus <laughs> i'm sorry <clears throat> to focus on that rather than just float upstairs ungrounded and just being homesick and sad and depressed you know just to put that in a few words and so now they want to address the question of like going within and that question of going within is absolutely crucial especially in this transitional period where Everybody is, you know, going through an essential process and, you know, that we want it or not. Some people are resisting and it's not going very well. Some are going with it, but they don't know really how to do that. And going with is going within is a very important way to, to be in contact with who you are, what you're meant to do here and, you know, who you're meant to help. And since this is what we're here to do, uh, it's really absolutely important. And again, Quentin and Desiree gave this really um you know, um, they gave their own ways of doing so, and it was really interesting. And I think, again, it's very important for, for us to receive different um, perspectives on how this can be done, because it gives the opportunity to each and every one of us to discover that we're unique in our own way of going within and receiving an information and trusting it, and that we don't have to rely on other people. But we can receive guidance and, you know, people can offer us, you know, just some some paths there, and then we can take them or not. It's 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 our our desire and it's our responsibility to to be sovereign and free will and do things the way we resonate with um so what he like i said um the most important thing is really to learn to focus to ground and to connect with our higher self which is you know our own vibration our own unique vibration um and yes helping others is absolutely important but it's sort of the second step and the first step should really be about going within because a lot of people who, you know, often star seeds or not star seeds, when they are on their spiritual journey, they finally discover that they're, you know, they want to help people, which is, it comes from a right, the right place. And it's from, from the heart and it's perfect and it's wonderful. It's generous. But some people sometimes, uh, and we talked about that, especially with Quentin, but also with Desiree, that some people just want to go directly to the goodies, which is helping people without going through the journey of going within. And like Quentin and um, Desiree mentioned um, in the previous videos, which was very important, it's actually to do that journey of healing and to do that journey of, um, of you know, doing some shadow work, you know, heal uh, your past traumas, uh, deal with your, you know, unconscious emotions and things that, you know, all the things that uh, you just sometimes we put under the carpet not to look at because they're scary. And, and it's a tough journey to go there because it's the dark night of the soul. And it's often a difficult transitional moment for us. And, you know, sometimes we don't want to go there. It's scary. We, we you know, we don't know if we're going to come out of it. You know, the depression gets scary and everything, but it's an important step in order to come back, you know, healed. And many of us just, you know, sort of don't go there and just try to go directly into the helping other people. But um, it is very important to remember that you cannot help people if you're not yourself being taken care of, you know. And I was doing a short video yesterday that I um, 
I, I did on my channel about, you know, sometimes someday, because I was feeling that way myself, you know, when um, some days you're feeling low, you're not feeling that you have enough energy or that you, you feel you feel like you've given too much to others without, you know, recycling and, and recentering yourself and giving yourself back energy, then you're just like, you're just empty and you're trying to give out of emptiness and then it doesn't work and you burn yourself and you're not helping others. And I use the metaphor of this, you know, what they say in the planes where, you know, you can only, um, you know, when the oxygen masks fall in case of emergency, your role is to actually put the mask on yourself first. And then after that, put a mask on the people you're taking care of, maybe your children or not. And this is an important metaphor about, you know, this is what we really need to do when we're in a context of helping people is really to make sure that we are uh, helping our first self first. And this is not egotistical. This is just balance. And this is just a healthy way of being able to give yourself energy back to create a cycle of re, re energization. I don't know if that's the right word in English, in which then after you can give to others, others give back to you. And then it's a cycle and it's nourishing and it's not driving you, you know, um, driving, sucking the, the life out of you, you know? So that's a, a point that was really important uh, that um, pa pa Paul and this guide really wanted to, um, you know, address. Um, one thing that he also addressed is the question of uh, meditation, he really insists a lot on meditation and grounding. Um, not everybody resonates with meditation. Um, his um, um, his view on thing is that meditation is really a key. Um, and then you can accept that or not. It's, you know, it's for you to choose. Uh, nobody forces anything on you. But he really believes. And so since I'm here to transmit his message, this is what I transmit and you do whatever you want with it. But he really thinks that meditation and grounding are absolutely quintessential to being able to focus, first of all, and to be um, to find contact with our higher self and through, um, you know, our guidance. And this can be done uh, also, uh, the grounding can also be done through a contact with nature, which is something that our friend Alex Collier is uh, often talking about as well, uh, which is, you know, uh, trying to be in nature because nature offers us the opportunity to have more silence and be in contact with our own frequency, which is something very important. Um, he also uses, uh, you know, holding crystals and things like that. You don't have to, but it's just suggestions because crystals tend to amplify energies and focus. So that's something he would uh, encourage to do, but again, free to, to do as you wish. So what he also wanted to focus on is not, is that we should um, make sure that we don't focus on things that are not that essential. For example, it's not the protocols themselves that are important. It's not that you have incense. It's not that you have crystals. But the really the importance about this whole meditation thing or going within thing is really about calming your mind, which is the main purpose of it, and being able to be in meditation itself. It's it's the receiving of guidance through calming the mind. It's not about, you know, having the perfect cute little meditative pants or the cute little meditation room or to be like the, you know, it's then it becomes like an ego thing or it becomes like just a superficial thing. So meditation is really about going within and calming the mind and be ready and open to receive the information. Um the purpose of meditation, you know, when you have finally calmed yourself is really about, you know, to also perhaps ask for guidance, ask, you know, questions about your path. What is my path? What is it that resonates? What is it that I want to do? And, or perhaps, you know, what am I supposed to do here? And, you know, if, um, if you are um, patient, uh, things will answer, will come back, will come to you, but it's a question of perseverance and, um, not about doing meditation a couple of times a week and then just abandoning and, you know, and uh, sometimes the answers come later. Sometimes uh, the answers come at the right time, which is not the time you would like them to come to. And, but they always come. And that's something his guide really um, em puts emphasis on is that the answers always come, but they're not necessarily going to come in the moment you want. And one has to be an acceptance of that because, you know, sometimes we're not ready. We think we're ready, but we're not ready. And sometimes they come really fluidly and naturally, and that's perfect and it's wonderful. But one has to be very persevering 
and uh, to be disciplined in a way. I'm not a big fan of that word, but the, you know, discipline in the sense that, uh, and I say that because I've been in my life in, in discipline all my life. So <laughs> I've eaten it, drank it, you know, discipline has been my whole life for many years. So that's why I'm saying I'm not a big fan of it. That doesn't mean that one should be like, you know, just lazy and lethargic, but, you know, just trying to find a right balance between, you know, a form of discipline and just perseverance and just focus, you know, basically. He also focuses on the point that we there is no right way to meditate, okay? Each of us has his own way, his own journey, and so meditating should be a very personal practice. Uh, he offers, you know, that there's guided meditation, there's unguided meditations, which are more like being in silence and calming the mind. You can do breathing work. You can have music meditations, which is something you more resonate with. Etc. There's there's so many ways of meditating. I even heard about you know um, in the mindfulness type of uh, um, approach to meditation. There's also a slow walking meditation where you just are in pure mindfulness in every millimeter of your action of walking or in you know. So that's another way. You know, it can be it could be dancing meditation. You know, I've tried that. It works well for me because I'm a very active person. So you know, there's thousands and thousands of ways to meditate and your way is the right way, you know, that you should never put pressure on yourself about, you know, what's the way of meditating. The purpose of this guidance is really to offer you uh, the, or, or put the important, put the emphasis on the importance of meditating, but then after that, it's your, it's your path. You do it the way you want. Another element that um, um, Paul's guidance was uh, really, um, was really focusing on is the fact that um, we should try to avoid um you know, either applications or things that um, want to ask a lot of money regarding guided meditation, for example. Um, you know, there's a lot, a lot of free meditations out there, a lot of access accessible material out there, even if it's not free, but accessible and reasonable. Um, try to avoid encouraging applications or individuals that really try to make money out of your on your back. And so that's something that is also very important um, on Paul's, you know, view, you know, so. Um, another element that's really important about focus is that, uh, you know, yes, meditate, yes, ground. But the importance also of not losing ourselves in, um, for example, in social media and that chatter outside of ourself that is constantly there. And that has been programmed and put there for a particular reason, which is for us not to go within and find our answers. So always remind yourself that social media is not there for your beautiful eyes. It's not, it's, it's not there to, you know, yes, it does connect people. And if that's the only way in which you use that tool, good. But if you're conscious and you realize that social media can also be a, a, a giant hole in which you can lose yourself in the chatter, in the little petty wars, in the little arguing, and you know, trying to keep a keep a keep a, a sane and healthy balance with social media, and you know, social life in general, not to lose yourself in others, maybe socially, uh, maybe online or offline, uh, but you know, just always try to remember to focus on yourself. And again, like I said, it's not an egotistical or self self centered thing. It's about always remaining in your frequency, in your balance, in your in your buffer zone, and then in your center. And then after that, you can apprehend the world around you in a more much balanced way without, you know, always being stuck in um, chatter, you know, and social media is very good at trapping you into this, this extreme chatter. So it's just about, you know, Paul is on social media as well. He uses, he uses it. It's not a question of devilizing anything, but just trying to find a balance in that, you know. Another important uh, point that um, Paul and, and his guidance are focused upon is uh, uh, the questions of, of taking care of yourself, uh, not just meditating, not just grounding, not just finding balance in, in, in your social life, but also, you know, taking care of your health. We are bodies on earth and there is a big tendency, for example, in, you know, um, new age movements, whatever, to think that, you know, oh, the body is just like third wheel, you know, who cares about the body? And that's, that's BS. 
you have chosen a life incarnated in a body on Terra. You chose that body and you're here to live amazing experiences with it. You're not here to um, ignore it, to hurt it, to, you know, torture it, to, you know, you are here to, it's your tool for experiencing your life on Terra. So it is extremely crucial to keep balance in your body, take care of your illnesses. If you have physical ailments or illnesses, important that you address them. If you want to go to allopathic medicine, which is, you know, usual normal medicine, go for that. If you want to go to holistic type of medicine or energetic or homeopathic, I don't know. I don't care, you know, choose what's good for you. But, you know, addressing your your physical issues is something that is important. It's not just about your soul. And yes, that's crucial. But, you know, your soul is in the body. And in, in order for this body to be able to receive the messages of that soul and to be in communication, being in a healthy body is absolutely crucial. So the way you eat the way you sleep, the way you have energetic hygiene, which we addressed in uh, with Desiree, the way in which you, um, you know, you keep balance uh, in you, all the spheres of your life, maybe your social life, your financial life, your, your physical life is crucial. So don't, you know, we should not ignore that. It's absolutely essential. So um, that's an important point he wanted to address. Um, he also wanted to address the importance of breathing. And that's something I've also addressed in my previous videos regarding uh, heart coherence breathing, because um, breathing is, you know, it's the stuff of, we're fractals of source and, you know, breathe, the, the, the breath of life of source is something that nourishes us. And we are, you know, our breathing is a way to calm our bodies, to focus our bodies, but also to actually clean our bodies and heal ourselves. At least it contributes to cleaning and healing ourselves. Uh, so it's an extremely important practice. So you can do a meditation, a form of breathing work, or you can just do breathing work outside of your meditation practice. You can just try to be mindful of, of your breath in everyday life and everyday actions. But breathing is really crucial. And that's something that uh, he really wanted to focus on. Now, another aspect uh, where Paul and his guidance really want to focus is uh, th that question of the mission. So once you have... Um, taking care of yourself, you have balanced, you have healed, you have went through your personal uh, healing process, you have, you're focusing, you're, you're, you're grounding, you're doing your meditation. So then you have gone within. And when you have gone within, perhaps you will have received information and then you have will have learned to trust it. And then what's your mission? What are you here for? Then you have probably realized that you want to help people or you want to contribute in some unique way on this earth to bring high vibrations or to help the transition or and that will call mission at the fault of a better word we're not a big fan of the word mission because it has this little bit of a pompous way to it let's just say you know what what we're here to do what we're here to incarnate or to be simply and um so one of the things that uh, paul wanted to give precision is about um, their missions about helping people is wonderful. We have first helped ourselves, then we, we can help other humans, other people. But we, you know, we should remind ourselves that helping people is not the only route or the only path. Um, we can also contribute to helping nature, to helping plants, helping animals, all life forms of any sort, and the planet itself. And a lot of people out there who are doing some inner work and are deciding that, you know, their mission is really about, you know, helping out there. Um, a lot of people think that they have to help humans and this is the only way. There's thousands and millions and thousands of millions of way of helping. And, you know, sometimes animals, plants, all life forms and the planet itself is, I'm not saying it's forgotten, but a lot of people, you know, perhaps because you don't get so much glory from it, you're not, it's like, it's not a, you know, you don't get a lot of, and, and sometimes, you know, there is some spiritual egos out there that just want a recognition and they do that. They do what they do for recognition. Obviously, that's not the way. <laughs> that's not the point. But again, you know, doing things in a very anonymous way and helping beings that, you know, cannot talk and not say to everyone how wonderful you are. 
And I believe personally, and that's not something Paul said, I'm saying it, that, you know, what Paul does in his own way, in humility, in being wanting to be anonymous and and helping, you know, the animals and wanting to plant the trees and heal people uh, anonymously without or charging the less as possible or not at all. Uh, I think I view it in my way as a way of helping people that is beyond just, you know, helping out of ego. It's something that really helps. It's very holistic. You know, he's he he wants to help very different um, parts of our planet. You know, the planet itself, the animals, the plants, the people. And I find that very honorable and beautiful. And I know he would want not me to just say that because he's very in humility. But, you know, I... I think it's important to say it out there. Um, he also, uh, he and his guide, obviously, uh, really also uh, put the emphasis on either doing things for free or at a very a reasonable and accessible price um, or through eventually through a donation process. Uh, they do not believe in people who actually charge a lot of money for what they do. Um, they It's something they, they don't feel comfortable with. They They're not yeah it's something since the beginning since i've known paul it's always about you know how things can be done freely accessibly paul is available at any time for some guidance some help some support i've never had any you know moment when paul said you know oh, i can't be there for you today or even when he was at work or whatever he's a person who's just you know he's there and he's there for free you know never have, have I heard or seen Paul accept any amount of money for anything he was doing? And he, he's always been a, a great helper. And, you know, his guide is really helping us a lot in our little group of friends. And never, never has he charged anything. And so for him, it's very, very important that people who actually, you know, for people who have an actual job like he does, for example, like a, what I mean an actual job is for people who have like a, a job outside of their main mission, you know, then he believes that it's not necessary for people to 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 actually charge for what they do, or if they do, they can do it in the form of do, accepting humble donations, or it can do it can be done through an accessible, reasonable, balanced price. Um, he understands that some people actually have to live from their mission. For example, if I take my case, or if I take Desiree's case, or if I take Quentin's case, it's their main job. That's that's where they live from. So obviously we cannot do that for free all the time. I have to charge for my creations. As much as I hate it, I have to. I'd love to give everything I do for free, but I can't. I, I try, for example, though, not to monetize my YouTube channel, for example, or I give like a free ebook of the transmissions I receive, you know? And so Quentin is and, and Desiree are trying to charge, you know, a reasonable amount for what they do. And so this is all about, you know, trying to be balanced, taking care of yourself, you know, just making sure you meet your needs, but you don't have to charge a lot of money to people because it's unreasonable and it doesn't make it accessible to everyone. And it's, it's unfair. It's, you know, and yeah, it's, um, and what, Paul and his guide wanted to um, address is the fact that there's many people right now uh, who are taking advantage of uh, the awakening situation and people now more and more needing to receive some guidance or healing because, you know, since uh, the disclosure is coming out and more and more with the following disclosures that are coming, uh, people are going to be in shock learning what, what is happening in the world. And being in shock, people are going to have to face their fears. They're going to have to face their own shadow within and things they have done or seen or participated to. And that's going to be very difficult. And for people to heal, um, they're going to need support and help. And this is why all of these people I'm talking about are there to help the, the best they can. And, you know, taking advantage of people's suffering and, 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 you know, needing help and support is definitely not a mission that is encouraged by Paul and his guide. So, you know, just make sure that if you, you're, you want to go through a healing process and be guided or helped by someone who is charging too much, you know, ask yourself your question, is this reasonable? And if you don't you resonate with that, go on and move on to other people because other people will offer more reasonable prices. So that's something that's, we have to be careful about is people trying to make money out of this situation. Um, so again, like I said, uh, the importance of finding balance. Yes, some you know sometimes you have to charge for what you do, but 
they can be accessible and reasonable and people will know that they will feel that in your intention and that's very crucial um paul was telling me about you know also this this thing where when you receive and you share you will receive in return it's a cycle you know we know that it's it's a cycle of giving and receiving you know if you charge too much and you don't share you could charge a lot but then after that if you give a lot then there's there's another way but if you're just charging a lot and you're not you know giving back to the community to the world around you or whatever then you're just you know hoarding and then you're not receive you're not going to receive in return and it's not a fluent it's not a fluent cycle um, another important aspect that uh, Paul and his uh, guide wanted to address is the question of um, our reasons for being on Terra, on this planet. Uh, like he mentioned earlier, we have to stop uh, focusing on being homesick about our, our world upstairs, our family upstairs. We are here to finish our mission here, to finish what we have started and to d- First, first of all, go within and discover what that is and then do it and finish it until the end. This is what we're here to do. Um, we are not victims of our life situations. May it be our illnesses, may it be our partners, may it be our financial situations, whatever challenges we go through, we have chosen that. And if we don't take responsibility for that, we lose our sovereignty and we lose our free will. We have chosen that before we came here. We signed metaphorical contracts with ourselves, with our soul. It's not, you know, it's not like someone forced us to have this life circumstances we have and the situation and challenges we go through. So it's not time for us to become all weak and victimized and be like, oh, I don't want this. I don't want that. And why am I receiving this? And it's time for us to just put our put our boots on and put our pants on and just like assume the life we have chosen to incarnate and the body we have chosen to incarnate, including all its ailments, all its problems, all its challenges, because this is part of the journey is to heal these things and to incarnate these things. So... He really focuses, uh, him and his guide really focus on stop feeling like victims um, and really um, yeah. And, you know, I don't want to add too much about this because I don't want to talk about myself because it's not the, the point of this video is to talk about Paul. But, you know, if you had a chance to listen to a couple of my videos lately, uh, not the interviews I did with my friends, but my solo videos you know i've been through that phase and and i'm no exception so in all humility i've been in phases where i was you know feeling a little bit like a victim and oh i miss my partner upstairs and my children and i'm feeling so lonely and yes i was a little bit sorry for myself i was feeling a little bit sorry for myself and you know i needed to get back on the horse and just remind myself that i'm here for a reason and it's not to miss my boyfriend upstairs and my twin flame and child and you know i'm not there for that i'm here they're here to just guide me and help me lovingly from upstairs for me to be here and just do what i do which is humbly be with you guys here and share my humble path with you and Paul's humble path and Quentin's and Desiree and other people's or to share my humble creations with you and and just do what I what I can to just be here and try to bring high vibes the way Paul does in his work environment and his around his friends just be who he is and just being who he is brings light and brings radiates good vibes around him and sometimes that's all we need to do sometimes we don't have to be a super soldier we don't have to be a super disclosure amazing person sometimes we can just be you know a person who does nice things for others around us be centered be focused uh, taking care of ourselves and others and and that's enough you know um we we have to stop putting too much pressure on ourselves on trying to be super things and super special things because we always we have to remember ourselves that to to ourselves that you know super people out there if if they do it for the right reasons and i take for example people like alex collier or elena denan or or Danny Henderson, or you know Michael Sala, or Tony Rodriguez, or Chris O'Connell, or Jean-Charles Moyen, Rebecca Rose. I mean, all these people that you know I follow, and many of the people who listen to these videos follow. 
these people uh, are not doing this, first of all, out of ego, but they're, they suffer the consequences of it. It's not like a super glorious thing. It's tough for them. It's They receive a lot, a lot of attacks. It's very, very difficult for them. So, you know, instead of trying to be someone super cool out there, just remind to just try to be yourself. And this is something I have to remind myself all the time, uh, just to be yourself and, and, and just, you know, accept that you, what you have to bring to the world is very simple. It doesn't have to be a super thing, you know, and perhaps it will make your everyday life not as crazy and hard as their life is. And God bless them. And I send them so much courage and love for what they do, you know, so let's stop compet competitioning with other people about, you know, what our life missions should be about anyway. But that's my intake. You know, I'm sorry. I, what I just talked about was my own thing. It's not uh, Paul or uh, his guide's uh, words, but I just wanted to add my little piece of info there just because, you know, I think it's it's really crucial. Um, one very interesting and very important aspect that Paul and his guide um, brought and is something I've also had the opportunity to hear through Alex Collier's um, webinars, which are absolutely, you know, crucial in this period um through his contacts with um his andromedan uh, contact uh, contacts is the question of um the human the Tehran human experience is cons consists of living and going through extremely intense emotions that can be as we all know very challenging difficult uh, it brings us down sometimes. Sometimes it brings us very up, makes us incredible manifestors because with the power of emotion and intentions, we're able to be amazing creators. That what makes us so amazing beings. But it's tough. And one of the really interesting things the Andromedans were saying to Alex Collier, but also what um, um, Paul's guide was telling to him is that being part of, you know, incarnating a human, a Terran human body is also accepting the fact that you will be incarnating these really intense emotions. It's going to be difficult and challenging, but it's an amazing experience and a unique experience. Because what he was saying is that basically uh, upstairs, when you when you get especially into higher densities, such as the fifth density or sixth density and or, and higher, obviously, you are in a, in a life situation that's perhaps a little bit less challenging, you know, because you're not stuck in a third density body with illness and whatever, and you're not being triggered by a bunch of things all the time. I'm not saying their life is a perfect heaven. They do have their challenges. They do lose people. They do have emotions, but they're able to go through them in a perhaps more fluid way. Here, it's very, very intense, very, very intense. And the, this is one of the purpose of being on this ex human experience. And that's, again, why we should not miss, you know, our people upstairs and everything is because we are here to incarnate this and have the experience of these intense emotions. Uh, this is actually a privilege. This is something the people upstairs see as a privilege. And we should remind ourselves of that and, and, and recall that because when we take ourselves as victims, uh, then we lose the whole point and the whole experience loses its its sense and its purpose. And so, um, you know, it's, it's a lesson we have to learn that to assume and not be victims of our emotions, try to balance them, try, and that's part of the journey to actually live them accept them, go through them, alchemize them, balance them, heal them. And then after that, you know, we were, we're more balanced and this is the whole journey. And part of this experience is also to learn that things are not perfect all the time. Perhaps unlike it is upstairs sometimes where everything, you know, is very fluid and high vibe and that here it's tough. We have challenges and things are imperfect and difficult but that's part of the journey. And it's my personal belief, and that has nothing to do with Paul and, and his guide. But I believe that there's, you know, lineups of people out there upstairs who really would like to have a human, Terran human experience because it's a trip. It's an f it's a f it's a effing trip. I mean, there's no other words than that. It's 
it's rough, it's tough, but it's so worth it. And I don't know about you guys, but when there's moments I feel better, after having gone through a very difficult ride, I realized the power, the healing power, but also the journey power. You know, we're able to journey so much faster when we go through these challenges. So that makes it all worth it. So that's something very important and unique, I find, that Paul was bringing through his guide, but that also kind of corroborates with Alex Collier's information with the Andromedans. I thought it was very interesting. Um, what Paul wanted to give also as a as a little, you know, offer guidance or support is that um, what happened to him in terms of being connected to his guide may it be through clairvoyant, clairaudience, but maybe it's not going to be like we said before, it's not going to be like that for everyone. And not everybody is going to become a clairvoyant or a clairaudient or a clairsentient. It's going to be different for each one. But what he means is that each of us, if we do the journey, if we, you know, if we actually do the work, the inner work, we will, we can and will um, be in contact with our higher self, with our guiding, guiding um, team or whatever. Um, but it's something that is not scheduled and we should be, um, we should be very patient with ourselves and with the process and not put too much pressure on ourselves. Um, and the, the process is unique to each of us. And, but also what he wanted to say from his experience is that don't freak out. If, for example, it takes place in a form that's very unique to you and you, you can't, you know, you think you're going crazy or the, the same way he said, you know, I, I thought I was getting crazy. And he's, like I said, a very level headed bloke, you know, uh, he's, Paul is very, you know, he's not a woo woo person. And um, he got freaked out, you know, when he had a voice talking in his head, he was like, okay, I'm psychotic. Jesus, what's happening to me, you know? But no, you know, he slowly got confirmation by going within that, you know, all of this was safe and all the thing was okay. And he invites you also not to freak out and just to trust in yourself, trust in your process, trust your guidance. You know, if you want to receive some exterior guide, some exterior confirmation, you can, but it's not necessary. Another crucial point he wants to talk about regarding our mission here or our purpose here is to stop fighting amongst ourselves, arguing and pursuing the division agenda that's been pers purposely, you know, put there by the deep state. We are here to transcend that. We are here to unite as Terrans. We are here because, you know, their divide and conquer strategy is working really well right now it really is you know i'm sad it's sad to say but right now it's working and the saddest part is that it's working even better in the you know disclosure community and spiritual community which is sad it really is sad so it's really time for us to like put our foot down and stop being you know infants and and not infants, because infants are often more mature than adults, but like just being idiots and 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 arguing egos and really um, accept that, you know, not all members of the disclosure community have all the answers. So that means not worship, not not worshiping anyone. I, I, I don't consider any of the people in the disclosure community as any other person than my sister or my brother. Same thing with upstairs. Nobody upstairs is better or should be worshipped. We're all equals at different levels of consciousness, but we're all equals. And everyone, you know, we're all brothers and sisters in this process. And each of us has something to bring to this disclosure process or community. And it's each, each one of us has a piece of the puzzle. And it's not about having the whole puzzle to yourself. And so it is not constructive right now to do what a lot of people are doing, which is, again, being lost in the chatter of social media by just, you know, contributing to the arguing and the fighting and, you know, and, and, and insulting and attacking certain people. We're completely out of the way by doing this. And we're not helping yourself and we're definitely not helping humans and Terrans and the whole planet. So it's really time that we move on from these attitudes and really go towards a more loving, but also a more... Um, and I think that the people who actually are fighting like that, who are attacking other people, are people who haven't done the work. 
I think there are people who are just on the beginning of their journey, bless them. You know, I don't want to judge them, but I think they're not doing the work. They're too busy fighting on social media. And now it's time for us all to do the work, to go within in humility, find our, find our inner frequency, listen to it as our dear Alex Collier says, be in contact with it. And this is something that uh, also Quentin will talk about in the next video we'll do about you know hearing your own frequency, which is absolutely crucial he got from his guide, but that's a parenthesis. Um, so we have to make sure that we don't put someone on a pedestal, but also it's important that we stop, you know, attacking people and making their life miserable. We're not going anywhere about doing that. So that's something Paul and his guide wanted to uh, um, just put emphasis on because he realized that it's really preventing the process from taking place as fast as we would, li would like it to, to happen. Um, finally, there's a few little tips that Paul and his guide wanted to share with us. Um, one of the tips is obviously to focus on gratitude on every moment in mindfulness. Every time you speak or intend or do with an energy of gratitude, you literally transform your life and everybody else's life. I mean, it's one of the most powerful things you can do is being gratitude. So that's extremely important. He also focuses, they also focus on, on the question of patience and temperance, which are crucial. And he says, mostly for me, as he's smiling, because Paul has a lot of impatience regarding the situation right now. And that's why he's so vehement about, you know, can we just stop fighting and be like all, you know, arguing with each other? Can we, because he's impatient like me and like everybody else out there. We just want, you know, the whole thing to happen. And, you know, so, but sometimes we do need patience and temperance. Again, like our dear friend Alex Collier said in his last webinar that we need to accept that everybody has to go through his own, um, you know, the process of disclosure and the process of, 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 of the way the plan is unfolding right now in order for the world to change has to take place in a certain way and in a balanced way for things to be balanced for everyone. Because if we if we are impatient and we just want to throw the truth at people's face and it, they're not ready to hear it, it's going to be catastrophic. People are just going to freak out and kill themselves. So the point is really to be in patience with ourselves and, and take the opportunity while, you know, things are a bit, you know, you know, if we feel that things are not going fast enough, then let's take the opportunity to work on ourselves more in those moments when we feel there's nothing happening, although a lot is happening in the world right now in terms of disclosure, but, you know, so, but things are happening at the right time and perhaps it's not the time we want, but they happen at the right time. Um, so, yeah, uh, regarding the question of, um, that's something you just added after, so I should have said it a little bit earlier, but it had to do with, uh, you know, if you don't resonate with someone's message, maybe from one of the people in the disclosure community, a spiritual person, or even, you know, someone from your family or someone from work, it doesn't have to be on the spiritual level. But if you don't resonate with a, an information or the person who speaks that information, just need, just move on. Stop arguing. Just, just, you know, uh, welcome the person in what he or she has to say and move on. You know, you don't have to subscribe to a channel you don't agree with. You don't have to agree to things you don't agree with. Just let go, let go. The letting go is super, super important. And if and if we're focused, grounded, and have a calm mind, we're able to do that. But if we don't go within and do these things, we're not going to be. Um, to finish this video, uh, I wanted to just to share a little um, a table that Paul um, shared with me. And he said, I want you to share that meme. I was like, okay, <laughs> I will. So I'm going to put it on the screen right now, but I'm going to read it with you just because I think they're really important things to focus on. So here it is. Things that it's not too late for. Healing, being kind, starting over, working on self, forgiving yourself, finding your voice, putting yourself first, meeting new people, believing in yourself, creating new dreams, showing up for yourself, learning something new, being who you want to be, speaking kindly to yourself, reminding yourself that it's not too late. 
So that's something um, our dear Paul wanted to share with you. So to conclude this video, I asked Paul if he wanted to share any links with us, like the way uh, Quentin and Desiree did about their own practice. Uh, Paul said he's, he had nothing to share in terms of links. He is working really hard on to make his uh, plan with his partner uh, come to life, which is that plan, like I said, about um, buying land and planting trees and creating a uh, the healing center and a transitional uh, sanctuary for the dogs and cats and animals. Um, but that's not something he actually has a link for right now. But, you know, uh, Paul will be around me for many years <laughs> to come. So uh, when he's ready to share that information, uh, it will be my joint pleasure to share um, a way, a link or uh, to a website he will put upstairs at some point uh, to put up there. I'm sorry, at some point on which you will be able to uh, to see what he does and, you know, what's his mission and um, perhaps encourage through donations if it's something you feel like doing. But perhaps if um, the uh, quantum financial system is moving the way it's moving soon, hopefully, uh, then, you know, maybe donations won't be even necessary anymore. We'll see how that goes. And in terms of final words, um, he just wanted to say that if you have any questions about either him, his guidance, um, his uh, his projects or anything like that, do not hesitate uh, to write uh, the uh, the questions on um, in the comments of this uh, YouTube video uh, down you know under the yeah the under the description of this video, or you can contact me uh, if you go on my. Um, through an email if you want to remain anonymous or not anonymous but if you want to talk about private things um then you can um, send me an email at abigailrichard.com uh, which is my website where there's a page a contact page and there you can uh you can send obviously a message which i will obviously transfer to our dear friend uh paul so it was my great pleasure and honor to uh, be able to share with you and uh, Paul's um, information and uh, his guidance information. Um, you know, I think it, I think what he brings is absolutely crucial right now in the world in which we are and this in the transitional period in which we are. Um, and I thought it was absolutely crucial to to bring this to the table. And I think he's also bringing us a very interesting perspective on the whole question of going within, receiving information and trusting it because his own life experience, it really, really um, is a very good example of what he's been through in the last three years and how he's been through that process. So that gives you an opportunity as well, if you're going through a similar process to you know, either compare or see the similarities or see see the differences and perhaps reassure you and give you the opportunity to be supported in that way to see that you're not the only one who's going through process of finding information and that there's many ways in doing it and then you can respect yourself in doing it in your own way. So I'm going to let you go because it's a long video and I wish you a beautiful weekend. Uh, send you lots of love and Paul and his guide uh, join with me to send you the highest possible vibes, which I know they're filled with because I always feel the beautiful, beautiful, loving and light energies. And I offer them to you uh, as a humble transmitter and uh, the best I can here with this video. And uh, so I wish you a beautiful weekend. Take great care of yourself and keep in your high vibrations and we see I see you soon. All right. Bye. All my gratitude for helping this channel bring positive vibes to more people.